Hey, what's up guys? Sadness here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're hopping into a game called Manor Lords. Now, we checked this game out a pretty long time ago when it was actually just a part of Steam Next Fest. And uh, I've been waiting for this game to come out because I've been pretty excited for it. And apparently it was like the most wishlisted game on Steam or something, so I guess a lot of people have also been excited for it. Go ahead and read you guys the Steam page here. Manor Lords is a medieval strategy game featuring in-depth city building, large-scale tactical battles, and complex economic and social simulations. Rule your lands as a medieval lord. The seasons pass, the weather changes, and cities rise and fall. So this is like a mix between like a city builder and it has like RTS elements, I'm pretty sure, which I'm horrible at, but I do like city builders. And I wanted to like hop more into this game because when I checked it out, it was fairly like early on. So I want to go ahead and see what they've got going on with it now. And uh, yeah, so we're going to hop into this here. I get to make my coat of arms. I get a portrait. Let's go for Mr. Baldman with a beard. Sure. This dude's got a sick mustache, though. There we go. Nothing overly fancy, but I think this works. It's a tree and the ground with the sky in the background. Beautiful. Let's go. Now, scenario templates, we have Rise to Prosperity, Restoring the Peace, or On the Edge. Um, it looks like it wants us to start with Restoring the Peace. Um, Promise, two territories in the north are claiming by the illegitimate Baron, whose castle is located off the map. Bandit camps reside in the other unclaimed regions. Build and expand at your own pace. When ready, challenge the Baron for the northern territories, and to win, you have to conquer every region. We have... Rise to Prosperity, fulfill the requirements of your citizens, plan and rule your medieval town as you see fit without worrying about combat. Victory condition reached the large town settlement level. After that, you may choose to continue in endless mode or on the edge. Grow your city and raise forces as quickly as you can. The lands are pestered by raiders and undefended settlements. Undefended settlements will quickly perish. Survive all the attacks and reach the large town one. That could be interesting for the future. It looks like it also says, more coming soon. AI city building is still under rework. So that could be interesting. Uh, we'll just start with restoring the peace then. And um, end goal domination. We'll go for default difficulty, I think. And we'll just keep everything how it is for now. I think that'll be a good starting place. So let's just start here. Now, as we can see, we have our little small camp here. We have our ox named Hans, beautiful. Um, and then we have everybody around here. So we have a new message. Dominance, build up your town, your manor, and when ready, press claims towards regions owned by your opponents. Once a claim has been pressed, be ready for battle. Gotcha. So it looks like first we're probably going to need some food and some fuel and people want a roof over their head. There are homeless people's tents here. We have a little bit of wood. We have, let's see what we got. We have wood, uh, food, enough food for four months it seems. We have our one oxen named Hans. Public orders 100%, our approval ratings 50%, that's pretty good. At least a, it's a good starting place. We have five level one families, t uh, eight males and two females. There are no living spaces. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and probably start by building them some homes. Oh, and here is all of our stuff. We have construction materials here, 38, 20 food, 20 fuel. The rest of the stuff, we have no like equipment for military, so... That's something we're definitely going to have to get sorted out sooner rather than later. So first things first, I think we should probably go ahead and build logging camps. Every region of Manor Lords has strengths and weaknesses. Be sure to check all the resource deposits as well as investigate the soil fertility before deciding on the direction of your town. If your region has a weak fertility, considering setting up trade. Gotcha. Okay, so if I actually go here... We can actually check there's underground water coming through here, which is actually really nice. It's right by our starting city. Um, let's see. Fertility for Ummer is not too good. It, it's decent here, I think. So we'd have to expand there. Flax is pretty bad. 
So we might have to set up flax trading. Let's see, barley's good here. So maybe that could be a farm there. Rye is good in this. Looks like this little forest we're probably going to want to use for a lot of farms. And we have smell is good. Fire hazard is a work in progress. All right, so what do we got here? Berry deposits, wild animals. Uh, there's a road here. So I think what we're going to do, we're going to build a logging camp. And we're going to go ahead and... I don't necessarily need it to snap to roads. But uh, there's also uh, quite a few things over here. But for now, let's go ahead and start with this logging camp. Um, maybe I'll rotate it a little bit like this. And we'll place that here. Have these guys go ahead and head over there. Now we're also going to need... Let's see, residents. Uh, two timber it seems to make some homes they're obviously level one so some buildings have flexible borders place four points to designate an area the cursor will snap towards roads and buildings to try and create an organic shape uh, you can leave more space for future extension upgrades um, the first two points mark the front of the house by default gotcha all right so our first house here's the logging camp like I said, I need to kind of keep this stuff. I want to build the residential area more towards this area that's not fertile for anything. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at right now. So let's go ahead and build a couple houses here. You know, I'm thinking maybe we actually go ahead and place the houses over here. Considering the fact that there's underground water here, which you can see. So I think having it close to that, maybe we'll start our first house here. Um, the front of the house will be, no, I don't want it all the way against. Let's go for, that'll make three houses. That's probably okay for now. Let's go ahead and build them here. So we'll start to get that done. And that's going to be our little residential area. Let's make sure these guys are doing their stuff. I'm going to add a couple roads so they can actually go ahead and start bringing everything to where they need to be. Um, we'll just go ahead and build a road here. I'm thinking like we're pretty much going to have it go all the way across. Looks like roads are fairly are free, it seems. So let's keep that for now. Everybody can start doing their stuff. Um... I don't know how many people can live in one house. I might need to build two more, but for now, let's uh, go ahead and let them get started on their stuff. All right, Hans is doing his thing. You do you, man. You do you. We got uh, hitching posts. Oh, yeah, I was moving the hitching post over here. Um, I don't know if it was that big of a deal, but I didn't want it right in center. I suppose it doesn't matter now, considering can I stay with this drink? Uh, we are moving everything anyways. But it is interesting that we can go ahead and look at everyone. Herman. Hello, Herman. Alright, so these are going to take them quite a long time to actually get over there on this road. Which, it's a little bit of a shame considering... You know. Obviously, we have a crap ton of stuff to move. Expose pantry and... Expose goods. So I need to make more storages. I do like that about this game. You can actually see them building and doing all their stuff. And you can hear them chattering too. He said, I think the window should go over there. It's a good touch, you know, just adds small details to things. Um, I went ahead and have the logging camp to be top priority because obviously we're going to need that before we do all this other stuff because if we don't, if we don't have any timber, then we're pretty much screwed. So we got a new message here. I have heard of your renown. I only seek to defend my rights and my honor against those who would wrong me. I hope you will not judge me by the rumors and slanders that some have spread about me. Signed and sealed by my own seal, Hildebolt von Beerenraut. Are you the Baron guy? You have no right to claim 
rightful claim to Selvitz and Hofstanton. I can do Roderick. Negotiation. I need silver, you piece of crap. Uh, or War Surprise. I'm pretty sure that would go very badly for me. So let's go ahead and write him. You have no rightful claims and see what he decides to say back to us. Um, he doesn't look like a very happy person, but I guess you never know a person. Can't judge a book by the cover, right? Let's go. Letter signed. This view shows you which regions are under whose control. You can press claims to other regions when you have enough influence. Got it. So here is our map and this is where I am currently, I believe. Right. And then we can zoom out and... So we have a couple different places here. Um, we need to take back these two places. Um, it doesn't look like anyone owns these. So maybe we just work our way over until we get to that point. Um, specialize your region. After you reach the next settlement level, you'll be granted a development point to spend. Unlock development branches to make your regions more efficient. To enact policies, you will need to raise your administration level by building administration buildings like the manor. Ooh, I like this little bit of art here. So we have policies, production, and development. I like that. All right, the uh, logging camp has finished, so we're going to go ahead and assign some families to it. And it looks like the livestock is shared between places if you don't have enough. So we're going to go ahead and add a couple people to this because we're going to need all that timber that we can get. And then they're going to go ahead and start building the rest of these houses. In hopes that... Am I going to need two more? You can see they're going ahead and felling some trees here. We're going to get more timber. Which is very good for us because we really need that in order to finish all these houses and such. I really like the designs of these houses too. Like they're fairly simple, but I do like them. I think they look very nice. Homeless will move to the plot, and if approval is high enough, it might attract new families, too. However, families need more than ju just a place to be happy. Click on their building to see their requirements. So we can see they want water access. Makes sense. Church level. You need at least a wooden church. And they want a fuel, food, and a clothing supply stall. Very needy, but you know it is what it is. So it does look like we're going to need at least two more houses. So let's go ahead and make those two because homeless people, not really what we want in our area. Here we go. These sides are going to be a little bit longer than this one. So we can have different like, it looks like maybe you can put farms and stuff back there. So we're going to go ahead and have those down. Obviously we're going to need these people to get more timber, but... For the time being, I think we should be okay. Okay, so we can see the people living in here. Um, one family. So these are enough for one family. That's pretty good. Then obviously once these are done, we'll be able to have a little bit more. But we're going to have to wait for all this timber to be coming in here. Obviously we're not going to have any stockpile because we're going to need all that stuff. Alright, let's see... Yeah, check it out here. They get a little uh, shack in the back. I don't know if we can do anything with it. Backyard expansion. Vegetable garden yields, okay. Chicken coop or hides. I think that could be good. We have 50. Maybe I'll wait on that, but 50. Uh, I don't know though. It could give us some food, right? So let's go ahead and do a vegetable garden back there. And uh, I think that'll help because then that'll give us a little bit of food production going. Our settlement has increased. To get more population, you have to have enough empty burgage plots and your approval needs to be over 50%. All right, so we've got a development point here. So I can go ahead and choose if I want enables blacksmiths to craft helmets. Do I want charcoal burning. Um, doubles the capacity of all your berry deposits. We can enable hunters to lay traps in the forest, which gives us passive meat income. Workers collect honey. Okay. So, 
honey, foreign supplies. A permanent market saw which provides a passive income of firewood as long as the region has enough regional wealth. Region does not pay the transport fee. Must be placed on the marketplace. Same with food. Okay, interesting. So we have a couple different ways that we can go about it. Looks like we have smithing. We have hunting and foraging kind of stuff. We have farming and we have maybe like, you know, social things. Uh, adding a pl adds a plow station enables employing oxen at the farmhouse. Sheep breeding, sheep grazing on the pasture slowly multiply. Or an apple orchard. Takes three years for the trees to grow, though. Um, I think maybe we save a point for now. I don't know if we necessarily need any of this stuff right away. Uh, I could go trapping, though. You know what? Let's go trapping. I think that'll be good because that's just passive meat income, right? So if we have that, then we should be good. We only have two months of food left. I'm going to need to get some stuff done here. And so I'm thinking we have a hitching post. I do need a place for, I need a storehouse and I need the granary. So, all right, our other home is finished. Uh, our, we have homelessness, which just got corrupted. So we don't have to worry about that anymore. Those supplies will get moved over to these once that is done. All right, what else do we need here? Obviously, we're going to need a way to make food, right? So there is a berry deposit over here. It's a rich deposit, which means I can go ahead and put a gathering thing here. And we can go for a... Where's it at? Plants new trees. That We definitely need that. Workers gather berries from nearby berry deposits. This is definitely something that we want here. So I'm going to go ahead and build a road probably straight into this forest area. Probably straight through like this. Because then we have the wild animal rich deposit as well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and make the whole berry kind of camp here. Right. And then we're going to go ahead and make the hunting camp close to this. And... I think that's going to be good for food production. Now we have food production. That's probably going to solve that problem. I do need to add a forester hut so they can plant new trees in the area. Because obviously if we don't have any trees, we're not going to be able to use this little area anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and throw a road here. And we're just going to put the... Um, Forester hut here, right behind. That should fill up that area with wood. Let's see, is there any stone around? There is all the way out here. So I don't know if we necessarily want to do that yet. Let's just let them do their thing. Let's get all this stuff built up. And I think then we'll go from there. All right. Armament delivery. A strong militia is paramount to the survival of any settlement. Luckily, a shipment of weapons has just arrived, and you will now be able to create your first militia banners to serve you and protect your people. However, we will need more weapons to equip all the people as the settlement grows, either by making them or importing them from other lands. That could be really good money, though, if we do go for blacksmithing. Now, you can see our storehouse and our granaries up, um, so that's going to be... Helpful for these things to not be exposed anymore once they get that stuff actually going. I could probably, like, build a road here so we can make sure they can get to that faster and put it all away. What if I can uh, get them to move it quickly? Maybe not. Oh, you know what? I have to add people here. Looks like I have 15 people that are actually available for work. We need these things to get done as well. I can probably build some more houses over here. Unassigned families needed for construction work. Forager. Oh, is everyone assigned? Hold up. Okay, yeah. So, uh, let's... Uh, I didn't know it assigns a whole family. 
So let's just unassign these. I think one family per is fine right now. Um, we always need wood. Let's just go to there for now, and then they can go ahead. We have one unassigned family. I can go ahead and start doing stuff. All right, they also ha seem to be wanting trade in their area as well. So we need market stalls. Here we go, marketplace. Now, obviously, we're going to want the marketplace by the road. Or it could be in the center. I mean, this is kind of the center here. Let's go ahead and do this. This whole area can be a market. That could be fun. Oh yeah, look, they are building market stalls. Awesome. I'm sure they'll get maybe get cooler looking over time and stuff like that. Alright, so we're gonna need we're gonna need some more people here. We have 23 timber. I'm gonna take everybody out of the logging camp. And we're gonna see if we can start getting some berries from this forager hut. Um no one assigned families to God the Ox. Do we need that right now? Take somebody off the storehouse for now. And are you guys collecting berries now is my question. Because if you don't, we're pretty much screwed. Alright. Food is coming in now. Firewood's coming in now. Okay, this is good. I'd like for more people to come in, but we need our approval rating to be above 50%. Um, we got this hunting camp as well, which maybe I'll take one family out of here and put it in the hunting camp. That should give us even more food. And I'm thinking with that, we can start to actually get a good little foothold here in this area considering now we're going to be getting berries and meat looks like we had bread but we were very close to running out my approval rating is going up because of the food variety on the on the market which is really nice we have 23 timber i could build more houses and then we could get more people to come that could be nice These people are having most of their stuff actually fulfilled here, which is really nice. Alright, we're adding some space for more families to come in. Looks like families are actually... A new family started moving in. That's good. Resources stolen by nearby bandits? Where are they at? They're stealing my meat. What the heck? All right, well, we're going to have to get an army up and going soon. Sooner rather than later. I do like how the population is families, not actually just people based. Because then you have, like, we only have one unassigned person. But it's a whole family, so they can still get stuff done. Like, they can do multiple things. You can see that person's moving the ox, this person's building. So it kind of is nice how that works out. Now we can see here, if we get to, if we get two Burgage plots to level two or higher, that will make us a medium village. I'm not quite sure. What do we need to upgrade it? We do need to make a church and a clothing stall, but we don't have that yet. All right, we got another new family. Kind of perfect timing because the saw pit's about to be done. Now, one thing here we can go ahead and check is visit mode. So I can actually kind of walk around my settlement and see what it looks like, which is pretty cool to me. Obviously, this part's still kind of uh, a very early part of it, as it's stated there. So I said, expect glitches. But, you know, it's cool that you even get to do this, because a lot of games, like, you really can't. So there's the saw pit. We also got the little... Can you go inside the buildings? Come on, come on, 
Okay, that's kind of cool. Does it just phase me through, though? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Cool, though, in my opinion. Wow, look, you can even go to the hunting area and see all the animals. I wonder if we can see the hunters out doing their thing. Now, here's the thing that I kind of want to check out. So, I can have an army here. I can hire mercenaries if I want to. The Brotherhood of the Forest, Brigands for Hire, and the Wayward Sons. Large pack of baddies lead the by the biggest and the toughest of them all. So it looks like light mercenaries and brigands, or brigands, or light. I can't afford them. The only thing I can afford is brigands for hire. Um, which I'm not really sure how good they are. Paid up front after each month, so I can't even do that. So what do they need? Nope, can't make those. Looks like I can make 16 spear militia. If I head up here to this bandit camp, how do we see what they have? Looks like they have about 15 people. And they're probably better than my guys, right? But this video is getting quite long. And I do want to show you guys. And I also want to see for myself what the armies are like. So let's go ahead and see. Let's wait for them to get all their stuff on. I mean, honestly, I should start moving them towards the camp. It's going to be quite a march. Is that another one up here? Alright. I don't see this going very well for me. Okay, they're... Okay, uh, the bandits are coming. They're, it's 16 against 16. Let's let them push forward a little bit. Okay, here we go, guys. How's this gonna be? How good are my peasants at fighting? You guys got this. Effectiveness 96. We have higher effectiveness. I believe in you guys. I know you're just peasants and these are kind of like brigands and such, but you guys got this. Who's going to draw first blood? Guys, no one's dying. Double speed. Oh, one of the bandits died. Two of the bandits. Three, four. They're probably going to retreat, too. All right, guys. I need you to chase them. Chase after them. They got experience, too. Can we burn it down? That's the question. Heck yeah. New message. When searching through your enemy's belongings, you found a stash of goods. They could be sent to your people who surely need them. Um, it is your right to keep it, though. Uh, send it to the nearest town or it belongs in my treasury. Um, we'll send it to town for now. Regional wealth gained. So what does my personal treasury do? Usually collected from taxes can be used for diplomacy, hiring retinue and mercenaries, as well as settling a new region. Gotcha. So I'm actually going to send these guys over to the other bandit camp I found. How many do we think are here? Yep, okay, this is what I was hoping for, because the reason why I say that, we have 118% effectiveness right now, right? And when I was in the trees, it said surrounded by trees, so you lose effectiveness. Now, if that works how I'm expecting it to work, then that means that the bandits are going to be debuffed when they get here. Which they're not, but it's fine. We're more experienced than them at this point. I just want to say, this is a big come up for my peasants, alright? We killed two bandit forces as peasants with no experience in warfare. I'm going to send this to my treasury this time. So now I have 153. We have 305 regional wealth. Assuming because it combines, uh, can be used to Im for import or converted into treasury via tax policy. So we're actually doing great. 
With that little bit of combat initiated and completed, I think this is where we will end the episode for today. You can see our village has done quite well for itself now. Uh, a big come up from the start. We're at 60% approval rating. Um, the only thing that we have that's kind of bad is the fact that our generic storage is full, which is not really a bad thing to have considering check this out we have four unassigned families right now which means i can go ahead and get a trader let's go ahead and buy a horse so they're gonna be delivering us a horse that we can use for trading um this thing do we want more hunters and stuff how much food do i have i have enough food for 18 months so we're just gonna go here and put a couple more people on the woodcutters lodge um I'll go ahead and... Oh, look, order another ox. Trader will be available in 30 days. Maybe I should have done that first, but I didn't know I could do that, so... Hey, now we know for the next episode. But I believe we have probably people in most of these places now. Uh, the saw pit, how many did I make? I haven't put anyone in there yet, so I'm actually going to go ahead and throw somebody in the saw pit. And wood, we're good on wood. We have 22 timber. We need to make that church next. But I think this was a really good start for this. If you guys do enjoy this series, or if you want it to be a series, make sure you let me know down in the comments or by leaving a like on the video. Subscribe if you want to see more. Make sure you ring the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. And I'll see you guys next time. Have a good day, guys.